Let's go. Let's uh, let's grade the superstar player that we were all waiting to see. Fuller and Balligan. Hurt yeah. got his first start for the United States. It comes against Mexico. He didn't get the goal. He got what about 75 minutes? Yeah. What grade are you giving him? I'll give him a B. It's very difficult wow, to come okay. into a, a brand new team with what a handful of training sessions and be the player you know you can be right uh, have your teammates around you know your runs mm -hmm. understand your movements understand your tendencies understand the timing that type of thing so i'll let that slide mm -hmm. but the the effort the fight the understanding of the moment uh, when cesar montes got red carded is because for, it was because flo balligan like yep. literally chased him down 40 yards chased him down won the ball and then drew the foul and that's why he got red carded he was up for the moment it, not everybody understands a game like this. And, and for that to be your debut, I thought he was solid. We've not even come close to seeing Flo. We've not come close to seeing what this player is about, but I thought it was a, a solid beat. Wow. I, I give him a C minus, which for me is kind of like the lowest passing grade possible. A lot of that hurt. Like D is the passing. Yeah, yes, I know, I know. <laughs> but D is also not a bad guy. You don't want to come home with a D. You know, right, C minus, you right. can still, you know. It seems a little harsh. C's, you, you get the I think that's more your that expectation. Way. Trust me. Yeah. I think the, well, that's what it is. It is the expectation. Okay. I mean, this is a guy who dropped 20 goals in, in a top five 21. league in the world. So I think that he should come in and, and, and have, if not a goal impact, Turk, a visual impact. I don't really feel like I noticed him too much in the game. It was everybody else yeah. uh, that was standing out. And I think if you're a guy like Ricardo Pepe, you see Balogun's performance and you say, okay, hey, I still got a shot at this starting job. Oh, I don't think Ricardo Pepe thinks anybody's in front of him. Well, that's a Ricardo Pepe thing. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. Uh, if he but looks at the depth chart, he knows Balogun's in front of him because Balogun just walked into this team and is a oh, starter. Time out, time out. Pepe just bagged the goal. Okay. And Pepe, Pepe's the reason that Greg Berhalter kept his job okay. in the opening window. So you start Pepe on Sunday? Line. I think you have to. Really? Yeah. Why? Because Balligan didn't do enough or because Pepe didn't more? more? A little bit of both. Okay. Not only that, but because also you just played Balligan 70 some odd minutes, right? And the short turnaround. So it might make sense to give Ricardo Pepe a little run there and let Balligan come off the bench and see if he could be that dangerous person. What's the difference in Balogun and Pepe in terms of what they bring to the attack and maybe what they make the U.S. play like? Or are they are they like for like in that way? No, I, I think Pepe's much more of a forward that can combine. A little back to goal, a little Very more. much. He's very silky, he can combine. I think Flo is a player that's going to go at you and direct. I think you need to play him through. Can I, I ask who fits this team more? Because what it sounds to me... Especially, I'm thinking of all the incredibly talented wide underneath central midfield players. I need a combiner more than I need a finisher? Or is that the stupidest thing you can say about a forward? <laughs> right. <laughs> you, know, you need a finisher more than you need anything else, yeah. The reality is there are going to be games where one suited more than the other because of the opponent. Really? Uh, yes, yes. You may play against a team that's just aggressive. I mean, we've just uh, been aggress. hyping Balogun up to the high heavens, and now we're gonna, he's, he's, a, he's a rotation guy? No, I'm not saying he's a rotation guy, but everybody you put in front of Ricardo Pepe, when it comes to the national team, Ricardo Pepe just keeps scoring goals, and he keeps having good moments. Yep. What do you want me to say? Like, back to the end of the line, Ricardo Pepe? Listen, Ricardo Pepe still wants to remind people that he's here. And Flo Balogun, he committed, and that is great, but you still need to prove that you're here as well. It's not that easy, like, hey, I committed. I'm a guaranteed starter. Now. That's not how it works. You get an opportunity, you need to do well. I think he did well enough. It's a B. Mm. Next game against Canada, I may go Ricardo Pepe because Lowe played a very physical 70-plus minutes. Yeah. Forgot to mention Canada off the top of the show. They, of course, beat Panama in the uh, earlier semifinal, so they'll be in the, in the final Sunday against the United States. We'll have a, a full preview of that on tomorrow's edition of Football Americas on at the normal time. Let's go big picture here, Herc. Uh, what does this victory mean for the United States as a program moving forward? And we'll stay away from the Burhalter stuff, so I guess let's make this more about the players and maybe the, the interim coach. That these players, for as much as we've criticized them, I called them soft. I called this mm -hmm. generation of players soft and a Greg Berhalter. They've been through some very difficult moments, and they've responded. And not only that, but if they come out victorious this Sunday, I, I keep saying Canada is top dog, and Mexico maybe historically, mm -hmm. But the performance, the proof is in the pudding right there. If yeah. the U.S. can beat Canada, there is no qualms about it. They would be top dog in the region, and nobody could say a word. Yeah, this team must just be flying with confidence. I mean, you, you think about... you got to oh. remember, you got to remember, those two red cards are important. Okay. It's it's Serginho Dest totally. and Weston McKinney who are two playmakers for you. I don't care where they both play. They're playmakers for you. They make things happen. 
And it's a very difficult and well-coached Canadian team mm -hmm. with some of their own playmakers. Well, it's definitely a, a boost for the confidence of like a lot of these guys. Your Des, your McKinney's, uh, all those cats can say, hey, whatever's happening at my club, you know, I know I can come to the national team. I can find success here and, and, and it's going to go well. And I think if you think about this generation of American players, Herc, like I was thinking about your generation um, who kind of went through a good spell going off against great Mexico. Spell. Great spell. Great spell. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking specifically against Mexico where Beat there, Mexico was, the there, was, there was definitely a tied turn. But you still knew what it was like to lose to Mexico, to suffer against Mexico. Uh, speak this, for yourself. This group of players here, I mean, they've been a part of teams. Like they, Some of them were around in 2019. But together, they don't know what it's like to lose to Mexico. And that's a very powerful thing to have. No, they, they This do. generation, they do. oh, when? They, they lost the Gold Cup 1-0. This they was lost. not this team. It was not this generation. It was Weston McKinney. That was McKinney, Michael Bradley. Was that, come Pulisic. on. That was, what are you that, talking about? The 2019 Gold Cup? Go back and look at that roster for the 2019 Gold Cup and tell me how, how similar it is to this team. Christian Pulisic had a chance to put that game away in oh, the first half. It's one guy, Christian Pulisic, one right. guy. There's okay. been a huge turnover in the national team from 2019 to 2023. Okay, you don't remember Serginho Dest's debut with Tecatillo Corona undressing That's him That's 2019, Herc. That's what I'm saying. But That's you know pre-pandemic. Like it's the before times this group of players they don't know what it's like to lose what to do you mexico mean? i, just I don't think they're going to go into ever a game against mexico until until they lose fearing this mexican team and no american well, generation has had that before um no American generation has what this American generation now has on Mexico. I don't know. There was there was American oh, generation. Oh, when did you guys that, win three nothing? There was a, there was American ah, generation okay. that beat him in the World Cup. You Different. forgetting about that one? Different. What happened years in in the next years? Mexico was right back on top. Her. No, they weren't. Seb. Look at the from the year 2000 to on. It's not right back on top. These numbers that you there's there's one year where the U.S. sends a, a B team in the Gold Cup and they send their A team in the Confederations Cup and then Mexico wins that. Goal. What I'm saying is these numbers you can manipulate in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're trying to get at, and I understand mm -hmm. the sentiment. And maybe true, these players right now, they seem to have the upper hand against Mexico, and they feel confident. But We've seen this rivalry, the tides turn so many times. Better than Mexico tonight and deeper than Mexico. That's the other yeah. thing we're learning about this, yeah. uh, this U.S. men's national Absolutely. team. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.